Let's look at cascading input controls in Jaspersoft Studio and Jasper Report Server. Now on the screen I have our sample wiki page that describes a very common scenario of country and state cascading. This wiki page is available at community.jaspersoft.com forward slash wiki forward slash cascading dash input dash controls as you can see up here. Now I'm going to go through this and just a slightly different scenario as well. So to get started, here's my report. I've got a selection of fields from my store table in my Food Mart database, which is our sample database. I've also created the report with two parameters that are special, country and state. You can see the country parameter is named country with a capital C. That's important because the input control needs to match. And it's of type uh, class, java.util.collection. And the state is the same. So it's state with a capital S java.util.collection. Both are for prompting, which will make them show up on the input control screen. Now let's look at our server, the repository explorer over here as well. We're kind of done with the report. That's all the report needs to do. We'll adjust it once we publish it to the server. Now in my input controls on my server down here, let me just expand it a little bit. I have a couple input controls. The country input control, which comes with our samples, and I also have a state input control. The country input control just has a multi-select query. It is mandatory, which is optional for you to do. And I do select distinct country, uh, sales country as country from region, region ID, greater than zero, order by one. That's right out of the box, and it's made that way for a specific reason. I went ahead and used that because it works fine for me as well. Now my state input control I created. Let me click on that. It's also a multi-select query. It's not mandatory. It is visible, of course. Let's look at the query for that. This one's very similar, slightly different, because I wrote it. Select distinct store state from state, or as state, from store, where one equals one. I threw that on there just to make sure my where clause is complete, but this is optional. It's just something I do um, commonly. And I did an x in statement inside of my input control query. Now remember, we're probably familiar with doing that in reports in that query there, but we can also do that inside of our query for the input control. XIN says um, it builds an in clause and it says store country is the field and it'll do an in clause based on this parameter from the report. If you remember our report has two parameters country and state. That country parameter will be pulled in here and uh, populate this in clause if it's filled in. So I get all the benefits of that in logic that happens for me. So again go back to my report country and state I would publish this report, which I've already done. Let's look at the published report. If I go back to my repository, I just threw it in my uh, samples folder. And if I click on cascading input controls and edit, go to controls and resources, we'll see that I've attached my country and my state to those input controls that I've created. So I've replaced those parameters with my input controls. I actually deleted the parameters and replaced them with my input controls. Um, as you do. Let's see how they work. So just by doing that, the state input control is now dependent on the country input control. So if you see Canada selected because it's required to select the first value in my list. If I click on Mexico, my state input control automatically runs that in clause and populates those in Mexico. I can deselect all. It's going to do a query there for everything then because it does a where one equals one. Again, if I deselect all, it says where 1 equals 1, so I get everything back. You could adjust that and say where 1 equals 2, and you'll get nothing back if there's no uh, country selected. If I only select uh, USA, for instance, just to make sure, Oregon, California, Washington show up. Now, we can do a lot with this. Remember, this can be any parameter from your report. Let's cancel out of this since I've already published it. Let's create another uh, input control, or excuse me, another parameter. Very commonly, we'll see a parameter like this called pware. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. We don't really care about the report. We're not going to change it much. It's not for prompting. It's kind of hidden, and it's just going to rely on the country and state. Let's pretend. This where clause can do anything. It is uh, Java lang string, so let's say it's going to replace a string. And this one can say where 1 equals 1 and uh, store state equals 
CA. Now I'm going to hard code it because I'm not going to use these input controls. But they could also use the input control if I wanted to. I could also do something like this. and uh, Or I could say or store state like. And then I could do a semicolon. And I could do something like this. And use my state input control. Now that input control is a collection. So this would have to be adjusted a little bit. But the idea is the same if that were a string. Now what this allows me to do is say uh, p bang in that case says just drop that in there literally, like drop the, the state value in there as a string literal. I surround it with single quotes um, and that allows me to use this as is. Now nothing fancy happens for me. It's going to get dropped into my SQL or into that parameter as is. So let's go back to my simple example where 1 equals 1 and store state equals California. I can press finish. Now this again, this, this where clause can look at this parameter, it can look at this parameter, it can do an if statement in here, it can do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but in this case I just have a simple example. Let's go back to my query and let's actually adjust this. Now this was a fake query, it wasn't actually doing anything because we were just looking at the input controls. We can say uh, dollar sign p bang p where. Now you notice I don't do anything with a where clause on there because my my p where parameter, because I'm using the p bang, is going to be dropped literally right there where I want it. So if I hit OK, my p where is going to be dropped. Let's just double check where 1 equals 1 and store state equals California. I'll save this. Let me publish it. Ignore those two, that's fine. Now we're not using our input controls in the query again. Let's just go see what that query does for us. I'll press back. I could have probably refreshed, but I'll press back and click on the report again. Okay, we have to have to select a value just for the report to run, but it's not actually affecting them. Now I should only see stores in California. And you see it's taking that Pware class. So now you can see I can do a whole collaboration of things. I could even take, if this pware clause was above, I could then refer to my pware clause in my state input control if I wanted to. Anything like that that I want to. So I could go back to my state input control inside my query, and I could refer to that in here. I could say, or um, pware. Something like that. Now this one probably not syntactically correct because I already have a where clause, but I could refer to them that way. So if my where clause had some complex logic in it, like an if statement or some conditional logic, I could place that in here too. Let's go back and take a peek at how to do that. So knowing we can use input controls anywhere, let's look at what we could do with our p where clause. Go back to my expression. I can say, um, let's say state. If state equals null, then where 1 equals 1 and store state equals California. Otherwise, um, we'll do p state, right? And again, state is a collection, so I need to do a little bit with this because it's going to come back as like comma separated values. But I could work on that if I really wanted to use this in that way. So I can do a conditional logic in here. In my if statement, again, back here in my query can stay the same because it's being dropped into the pbang. So I can do a lot of different stuff, conditional statements, any sort of JavaScript I want inside of that pware clause. Um, and this is just a little trick to get it dropped in there directly. Now, of course, you want to be careful that you're not letting users input values because this could open you up to a SQL injection attack. So you'd want to check for that before you're allowing them to drop things in. Otherwise, they could put something like delete star from store and you'd be deleting stuff from your, your database depending on the permissions on your tables. Hopefully this covers um, kind of the, the cascading input controls, but also some more things you can do with uh, input controls and how they can relate to any parameter on your report. One last thing, any report that wants to use country and state now together needs to include both of them. So every single report I would go through and copy those parameters into my report and use them inside my SQL statement.